I'm Dr. Bless and I'm back here again to bless you with another video. On this video, um, I got the amazing opportunity of the university letting me these installations of the prosectorium or the anatomy lab. And I'm gonna teach you some tips on how you can study better during the dissecting lab and how you can make the most out of it. So let's start with the video. So the first tip is very, very important. Here, I'll take you to this one with everything. So, tip number one, you should always, always, always come prepared to each and every dissecting lab. And why? Because most people come to the dissecting labs and spend their time in this room. So, most of the students stay out in this room. Why? Because they don't have an idea of what they're teaching. So, they're like going very quick through their atlases, through like YouTube trying to figure out how each system works and where to find it in the cadaver. But they don't realize that they have a huge opportunity to see the real organs, the real bones, the real muscles within the lab. So one of the reasons why I tell you that it's so important to come prepared to lab is because if you spend two hours before lab just studying and going through the material that you're gonna cover, you will enter lab with a huge different perspective and with a huge different vision. So you will be able to actually find the systems in the cadaver, being able to dissect them, getting to know where they are and all the pinpoints and you will be able to actually ask questions to the doctor that it's guiding you and actually take profit of the lab. And very important, once you get in contact with the models and with the cadavers, you won't feel overwhelmed because in the atlas, it shows in one way and everything seems very easy, very nicely drawn, but then you find the cadavers and you panic and you're like, where the heck is the large intestine? That happened to me because it looks very different in the cadaver, but it won't happen to you because you will come prepared. So let's keep with the second tip. I'll show you a bit around. take in consideration is to always, always, always bring a notebook to the prosectorium. And why is this? This is because you're already going to be prepared for the lab and you're gonna, already going to have a vision of what they're going to teach, okay? So you should always bring a notebook because you're going to listen to the teacher. And for example, the teacher will be very specific whenever he's explaining and he's going to emphasize uh, specific aspects of like the human body and you see this little like how do you call this stick the bamboo stick yeah this okay bamboo <laughs> you see this little bamboo stick it ends up with like a pointy edge and this is because the our teachers in, I don't know how your teachers are but our teachers are very specific and they would directly point into for example this set of uh, lymph nodes so you will need a notebook in order to write down every little body part or every little vein, lymphatic node, every vessel, any capillary that the teacher explains because this will probably end up being in the test. This will probably end up being a test question. That's why he's emphasizing into it and that's why he's very specific pointing into it. So always, always, always bring a notebook and write down. Okay, let's go. So this is a huge heart and my teacher, my anatomy teacher, her name is Anita, uh, she decided to ask me on the heart on my oral test and it was very interesting because she gave me like a real heart and it was huge and I was like yo, I didn't tell her yo, but I was like Anita, is this a human heart? And she was like no, it's actually a cow's heart and it was so huge, it was like I had to hold it with my hand and I was like damn, it was so heavy also. But uh, she used like, of course, the stick and she started pointing out every coronary, coronary artery and it was so hard for me but because I was prepared, I actually was able to um, identify it and she was very nice enough to have mercy on me but yeah, always come prepared and look, what a huge heart, this is Anita's heart. I love you Anita, if you're watching this, I hope you're watching this and you remember me whenever I do my next test but 
Yeah, I have circulation actually. Anita, watch this video. <laughs> know that I remember you, okay? <laughs> actually, guys, this is very interesting. The left lung is always smaller than the right lung. And why, cameraman? Because the heart is aligned to the... Exactly. Because if you see, the heart is over here. And while the left lung, while the right lung, sorry, has three lobes, one, two, three, the left lung only has two, one and two. And this is because the heart is on its way. And if you have a very big heart, if you have a very big heart like me, your left lung is gonna be smaller. <laughs> so, yeah, just fun fact, the left lung is smaller than the right lung. Two lobes versus three lobes. Very interesting. Always, always, always use the models. Next tip. Next tip, and it's very important. For every lab that you go, for every lab that you have assigned in your schedule, you will have assigned a different system of either musculoskeletal system, digestive system, and within it you will have upper limb, lower limb, torso, or you would have a specific set of bones. So it's very, very, very important that in the lab you always prioritize the cadavers and the models. For example, here you have a model, and the cool part of this model is that you are able to disassemble it and see the different lobes of the lungs. Okay, here the diaphragm. You're able to disassemble, then even you can see the bronchi. You see? Then you have the heart, you can even take it out. Wow! <laughs> You can see, for example, the esophagus. Here, you can, you see, you can learn so much with all of these models. You see, guys, like this part, like the whole cranium, the finding like each and every bone, the temporal bone, getting to know each and every characteristic. For me, it was the hardest part, the whole cranium. It was so hard. So what did I do in the labs? What I did was I would follow the crowd. And this is so important. Normally, the whole medicine career is very competitive and no one likes to help each other. But in the labs, you should really go to the crowd and it will be much easier to learn. They will explain you the stuff that they know. You will explain them the stuff that you know and you will be able to share so much knowledge. What did you used to do with the crowd? when you were in the labs. I should go and like eavesdrop to what my friends were saying because they explain sometimes better than the teachers do. <laughs> they, exactly. So if you need someone to actually explain it to you in an easier way that you find more comfortable with, let your friends explain it to you and it will be easier. Always eavesdrop into what the people are saying and try to get understanding, okay? Try to really get understanding. So for that, you have to follow the crowd. My friend Cecilia, hey Teddy, if you're seeing this, te quiero. If you're seeing this, my friend Cecilia helped me so much during my first year of medicine with the whole uh, cranium and the whole bones and muscles. Because she did a degree before that was physiotherapy, so she knew much more than me. So she was nice enough to explain it to me. So it's very important that you need work, that you have a good, ambience of friends around you so that they can explain you the stuff they know and then you can practice explaining it to them. It will be very, very, very beneficial. So always follow the crowd. Okay guys, so that's the end of the video. I hope it gave you so much value and you are already ready to learn about all the bones and muscles in a... Ouch in a productive way. I hope this video gave you lots of value, that you were blessed, and I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button, if you would like, if you would share with your friends, and you would follow me for many more tips to come. Be blessed and see you next Saturday.